What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. If you're new to me and my channel, then I'd like to say welcome aboard. My channel is meant to inspire, educate, and entertain you as I share my financial experiences and lessons from dividend investing and more. I originally started making these videos as a way to teach my kids, when they got older, about how their dad invests and analyzes dividend stocks, as well as other things such as mistakes I've made in my life. So some quick background about me. I've been investing for about 25 years and still have a lot to learn, but also have a lot I can share as someone who invested through both the dot-com crash and the 08 financial crisis, and still managed to build up a seven-figure dividend portfolio from scratch, which I'll show you in this video. So please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. If we get 1 million likes quickly, then I'll sell my whole portfolio and convert it all into Tesla. Now beyond creating stuff that my kids can someday learn from, I also like to create content that my subscribers have asked for. And I've had multiple subs ask me how I'd analyze a dividend stock if I had to do it quickly rather than the very in-depth analysis I did in my 25 dividend stock portfolio videos. Of course, I'd only use a quick analysis for a surface level understanding of a company. So if you're looking to invest, then I recommend doing the more rigorous analysis I did. Finally, before I start, I just want to inform you of a free service I provide, which is a dividend discord chat server that now has over 1000 dividend investors in it chatting about dividend stocks around the clock. It also has channels for people to talk about non-dividend investments like Bitcoin, Tesla, and real estate and such, and channels to talk about video games, movies and TV, books, news, politics, and our favorite stock mom Allgood has a room for various wellness topics. We also do things like polls to see what these 1,000 plus dividend investors are buying for stocks each month. Click on the Discord link in the description below or download the Discord app and in the invite field put lowercase k, k, capital S, lowercase r, 5, capital F, capital Y. It's a way that you can type or even talk to me and other investors in real time, which is especially helpful when the market is good or bad. Okay, let's use J&J &J as an example of a stock I want to quickly analyze. My first check with the ticker is to verify if it has a dividend. So in Google, I put in the words dividend.com and J&J. &J. Here we see a dividend yield of 2.68%. If the yield is over 8%, I'd probably avoid it. Ideally, I like a 3% or more. The lower it gets, the more I better believe in the long-term potential. The next thing I'd like to know is how many consecutive years of increasing dividends they have had, and if it's less than 10, then I normally won't look any further. I say generally because if it's a big blue chip stock that has just started down its dividend path, then I might still invest, like I did with Starbucks or Disney. Here we see a dividend growth of 57 years, making it a dividend king. The next thing I'd look for is payout ratios. I like to see payout ratios under 7% or less, other than for REITs which you don't use payout ratios. Watch my Realty Income video if you want to learn about REITs and payout ratios and such. Here we see a great 42%. Then I'll Google Guru Focus J&J &J CAGR to see what its five or 10 year dividend CAGR is. And ideally I'd like to see 7% or higher, though for some companies I'm okay if the growth is a bit lower if the starting yield is higher. But generally I prefer higher dividend growth and I'm okay with a lower starting yield. Optionally, I might check if its yield plus dividend CAGR is around 9% plus to compensate for some stocks with higher yields but lower growth. We see their 10 year CAGR is 6.8% and their five year CAGR is 6.3%, and their one-year CAGR is 5.9%, so it looks like they are slowly trending down due to how they've been performing in the market. Finally, a quick way for me to assess if it's pricey or reasonable is to see how the dividend yield has trended in Seeking Alpha. So if we Google Seeking Alpha J&J &J, and then I click on Dividends and Dividend Yield, we see a line, and if this line is trending down, that means the yield is slowly getting worse, which means the stock price is rising up faster than they're raising the dividend. If this line is trending up, that means the yield has been slowly getting better over time, which also means the stock price is rising up slower than they're raising the dividend. You can also just look at the ticker price and buy on a dip, but I like to see this yield data and incorporate that into it. The more accurate way of doing it, of course, is creating your own discounted cash flow in a spreadsheet. You can see some of my previous videos if you want to learn how to do that. Then I like to see increasing trends for revenue and cash flow. So I'll Google macro trends J&J &J revenue, and we see a 6.3% increase over 2017, a 6.7% increase over 2018, but only a 0.6% increase over 2019, so slowing down, not ideal. Then I'll Google J&J &J Morningstar, and then I click on Financials, so I can see if it has a positive trend for cash flow. We see 17.8 billion in 2017, 18.5 in 2018, and 19.9 in 2019, with the trailing 12 months of 19.9, so those all look nice. So here's a summary of the seven quick steps I'd go through. I usually go through all seven of those steps in under 60 seconds to get a snapshot of things I like to look at. If I gave myself more time, then I'd evaluate more metrics and ratios, such as their debt, amongst others. Again, if you want to learn my whole lengthy process to analyze the company, then watch one of my videos. Okay, now let's review my portfolio, which has been hit by the beer sickness. I can't say the real name of it or Mr. YouTube gets mad. 
Okay, so here we are in the portfolio. So we see that Infotech is 15.9% of the portfolio with Apple and Microsoft. Then we have healthcare at 11.4% and that has J&J, and Pfizer. Utilities is 11.1% of the portfolio with Duke and Southern Company. And then consumer staples food beverages are Pepsi and Coke at 12.2%. We have real estate with realty income at 6.1%. And this right here is consumer staples household goods with Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, and Colgate Palmolive at 13.9%. Communication services, AT&T at 5.6%. Industrials is 3M, Leggett and Platt and Caterpillar at 9%. Consumer discretionary is McDonald's, Starbucks, Home Depot and Disney at 8.7%. Then we have energy with Chevron and ExxonMobil at 3.6%. And financials with Goldman Sachs and Travelers at 2.6%. So here. Okay, so we start with the ticker, a logo of the company, the number of shares, the share price, it's red if it's gone down, uh, close of business, or green if it's gone up. This is a graph that shows how the stock has trended over the last year. So you can see it's green, so it's trended up, whereas this one's red, it's trended down the last 365 days for 3M. Current PE, average weighted PE, and a forward PE, and an average weighted forward PE. So the portfolio's average weighted PE is about a 27, and the portfolio's average weighted forward PE is a 19.8. The sector it's in, the percent of that stock in the portfolio, so Microsoft is 7.97%. Annual dividend, $2.04. This represents September is when Microsoft normally increases their dividend with a payout of December. And the next upcoming dividend payout is March 12th. It's in turquoise because it's within a week. And I have it in yellow if it's going to happen within a month. And it's green, it's highlighted green if it's paying out today. Then we see dividend yield for Microsoft, and then we go into the CAGRs, three-year dividend CAGR, five-year dividend CAGR, and 10-year dividend CAGR. So this is for all the stocks. And then we go into one that I calculate manually just to check. And then we see the portfolio value for each of these stocks. So I have about $126,000 of Microsoft, or if we look at, let's say Duke, we see I have $103,000 worth. And it brings the portfolio value to 1.58 million. And then we see how much passive income each one drips yearly. So Microsoft drips $1,593 a year. Duke drips $3,938. So cumulatively, the portfolio is almost at 50,000 US dollars a year that it's dripping. Payout ratio. And then we have some dividend information in terms of number of consecutive years of dividend increases. And we see the portfolio's average weighted years of increasing dividends is about 35. Then is it an aristocrat or not? And I'm tracking the beta. So we see that the portfolio's average weighted beta is 0.73. market cap for each one and we see that portfolio's average weighted market cap is 332 billion so those are the key things i track okay now let's look at the dividends i received in the last week and then look at some of the dividend tracking i have in my spreadsheet so i received dividends from southern company and pfizer as you can see on these two emails i got from e-trade i edited out my account numbers as i've mentioned in previous videos about 60 percent of my dividend portfolio is in tax sheltered accounts I received one Southern Company dividend in my taxable account for $272.33 and one Southern Company dividend in my IRA for $400.10 for a total dividend payout of $672.43. Since I've turned on my trip for Southern Company in both accounts, altogether it bought another 10 shares of itself about, taking me from 1,085 shares to 1,095 shares. So this quarterly dividend payout just increased my annual passive income by about $24.80 a year. Assuming they don't increase their dividend, then this would mean that just by holding Southern Company in my accounts, my annual passive income will increase by about $99.20 a year. But it should be higher than that since it compounds quarterly and because I believe they'll increase it. I also received a Pfizer dividend in my IRA for $175.60. Since I've turned on my drip for Pfizer, it bought another approximately 5 shares of itself, taking me from about 462 shares to 467 shares. So this quarterly dividend payout just increased my annual passive income by about $7.60 a year. 
Assuming they don't increase their dividend, then this would mean that just by holding Pfizer in my account, my annual passive income will increase by about $30.40 a year. But it should be higher than that since it also compounds quarterly and because I believe they will increase it. So between my Southern Company dividends and my Pfizer dividend, my estimated annual passive income just increased by $32.40, taking me up to about $49,386 a year in passive income. So I'm just about that $50,000 mark. All right, let's take a look at the dividends first for February. So this is the date the dividends come in. This is the ticker and this is the amount. So you can see AT&T got a dividend on February 4th for $1,223.56. Apple, $332.70, and then you see Realty Income, Procter & Gamble, Abbey, Caterpillar, Starbucks, and Colgate, Palmolive, and this is the total for February, and this is uh, an estimate that E-Trade gives, which isn't that accurate, and then if we look for March, we see we've gotten dividends in the last week for Southern Company for $672, and Pfizer for $175. And then these are the remaining ones coming for this month. So it's a pretty big dividend payout month with Chevron, Johnson & Johnson, ExxonMobil, 3M, Microsoft, Realty Income, Duke, McDonald's, Pepsi, and Travelers. So far, received $848 of dividends and the estimates for well, almost $6,000 for, for this month. And then here's another view that's kind of tracking it quarterly. So January, February, March. There's Southern Company at 672 and Pfizer at 175. And then we have one other view, which I'm just tracking each of the months and what's come in so far. And then I'll just keep on adding another month as time goes on. So there you go. Thanks. Stay awesome. I believe in you, and I'll see you in my next video. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments. Don't use this information without double checking it and talking to someone a lot smarter than me after you completely understand it. So I'll see you in the next video, and remember to stay positive, patient, play for the long term, keep investing in great companies, budget reasonably, and win. I know you can do it. Just like I know you can hit the subscribe, like, and bell icons, share this video with others, and comment below.